First Timothy chapter four, look what it says in verse one here. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. This is my contention with Lauren Daigle. If you stay tuned today, I'm going to show you some very shocking things that maybe perhaps even the most diehard fans didn't know about her. Uh, so do stay tuned. If you do make a comment of hatred just because you're a idol worshiper of Lauren and you're defending her at all costs, you're going to look pretty silly because it's probably contained within the video and you didn't see it because you didn't even bother to watch. So I encourage you to watch the entire video at least so you know where I'm coming from. So I'm going to further expose uh, Miss Lauren Daigle. Uh, one of the most, if not the single most, dangerous frauds out there right now because she wields such incredible influence. If you want to see something truly disturbing, just look at the amount of covers uh, that people have done on her songs on YouTube. If you want to go further, you can see different psychotic things such as pagan mimes doing interpretive dances to her music. This is quite disturbing and quite frankly, you'll see a lot of men who have voluntarily turned in their man cards. Um, quite disturbing. A lot of people might get, get upset about me, but really what it does is it shows you the absolute idol worship. This is these people paying homage to her. That's the kind of power that she's wielding. So I'm going to uh, show you some things today as we further expose uh, as needed uh, that's going to shock a lot of people. All right, so we're going to start right up front. Many of you might remember this unholy steaming dump pile of blasphemy called the shack. This was a horrifyingly blaspheme, blasphemous movie. Uh, but God brought me across something the other day that I want to bring to your attention. So I think by the grace of God, he brought me across this article on this website. This is JesusTruthDeliverance.com. Now, I don't know too much about this website, and nor am I promoting it. I just checked out the article as a starting point, and I did discover what they had put in the body of their article, which was uh, some of the Christian artists that contributed to the Shack soundtrack, including, surprise, surprise, Hillsong United, uh, Lecrae, no surprise there. But look here. Lauren Daigle. Now, she collaborated with Christian band Need to Breathe for a song called Hold On. I'm sure many of, you have, many of you have heard that song. But surprisingly, look down here for King and Country. Now, I did a video. I'm going to include it in the description where I took an absolute beating and a pummeling because so many were so upset that I dare, again, in, in another form, attack their idols for King and Country. They went out of their way to proclaim them as holy men of God. I'm going to show you a couple of clips right now. We're going to start with Lauren Daigle. All right, so out of her own mouth, uh, let's take a look at, uh, let's take a listen to what she said, and we'll, we'll examine it. I think one of my favorite things about this movie and the impact that it had on me was seeing all the different representations of God. Um, I loved that he was portrayed as a female for this. Okay, so this 27-year-old novice who clearly has zero knowledge on what is actually in Scripture loves the fact that the Holy of Holies, God the Father, was portrayed as a female. She loves it. Now, I don't know what else I can tell you. You, you, can't, you cannot continually excuse intentional ignorance uh because you'll watch in the comments somebody well drew she just didn't know or why don't you cut her a break or she's just ignorant of the fact no this again i i contend that this is a woman who's leading tens of millions of people and they're listening to her every word and imitating her every move we're going to get to that in just a second but so this is the first thing she said about god the father she loves the fact that he's portrayed as a female. And you know who else loves the fact that God Almighty was portrayed as a female? Satan does. He loves it because he's with that and with the leading of his disciple, Lauren Daigle, uh, he's successfully influencing the millions and the masses to also love the fact. Since uh, 
In the Bible, it always talks about how we're both made in His image, man and woman. And a lot of times, you know, because Jesus came as a man or... Um, Jesus came as a man as though it was like, maybe he had a choice. He could have come as a, a dog or a monkey or a tree. But he just said, well, God, I'm not sure. Father, should I, should I go down? When I go down, should I go as a man? Sounds good. Sounds pretty good. So I'm, this is ridiculous. He came as, I mean, ugh. I, I guess I always think of God as a man. And I love, I don't know if this is a spoiler alert, but I loved in the movie where he said, I, well, it was the female. She said, God, she yep. said, it's I had to come to you like this because that's what your heart needed at the time. Okay. So she loves the fact that uh, apparently God is like a genie. He can transform or he chooses to transform himself depending on what the human's feeling or what he or she needs to see. Uh, in this particular case, the guy maybe just wouldn't have believed the message of God or the power of God through scripture, through his truth, if he would have came as a man. So he had to come as a woman or else the guy just wouldn't have got it. So now I want to show you something just to offset this, uh, how important it is to realize. So we go over to Hebrews chapter 4, and I'm going to scroll down to verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. God doesn't have to show up as a woman or a dog or a camel, or a tree. The Word of God is quick and powerful. The Word of God teaches us in every case. And had this man, who apparently throughout the movie experienced tragedy, picked up the Bible, he would have known this. So God doesn't need to show up as a woman. You've got his Word always ready to go, and it is fiercely powerful, fiercely powerful. Doing this in real time, I'm just going to play it to see if there's anything else that Lauren can grace us, what, what any other wisdom she can grace us with. So seeing God as an image of, um, as like how their personalities are, I think that was the most special thing to me. She's absolutely biblically illiterate. And this is what's leading, again, tens of millions of people into, it's certainly a non-biblical doctrine. I mean, even those who hate me, have to admit that whatever she's babbling about here is both embarrassing and unscriptural. But these are the end times. This is where we're at. This is absolute lunacy. You know, I wanted to pause right here and insert this because I know that I'm going to get comments uh, where people are going to so cleverly come down and think that they're being so smart, saying that God uh, spoke through an ass. And this is just not true. If you go to Numbers 22, you can read about this uh, scrolling down, starting uh, on or about verse 20. Uh, but clearly, if you want to get right to it, verse 28 says, And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and it was she, the ass, obviously female, said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast spent these, me these three times? This was not God speaking through the ass. This was God opening the mouth of the ass. So let's just be clear on that. Now this is a little bit of, I guess I could call this bonus. We're going to take a look at what for King and Country uh, commented on their contribution to the shack. They put a song in there. And now I just literally got a comment 10 seconds ago that said, these are holy men of God, holy men of God. Let's see what they said about a female God. What the book and the movie has I think done a very classy job of doing, if anything, is... Can I really quick point out something? I want you to note the setting that they're doing this interview in, right? Very picturesque. They've got some nice music in the background. Wide angle lens, look pretty cool. Watch a little, a little slow motion here. Watch how they put this together and with the specific intention of deceiving you. It's going, hey, knock, knock, knock. Uh, don't put him in a box, you know? Don't put faith in a box. Right, so he says, don't put God in a box. This is all designed to make you feel stupid. Like, God could be female. Hey, if you don't think he could be female, then you're the one that's at fault because it's you that's putting him 
in a box. Shame on you. Box. Don't put God in a box. Don't put Jesus Christ in a box. Don't label him a goody two shoes or a great person. Like, this is bigger than you think it could be and wider. And to expand your mind in that way uh, is a beautiful thing. And, you know, expanding your mind in that way is a beautiful thing. It doesn't have, according to this guy, it doesn't have to be scriptural. Just as long as you're expanding your mind, it'll be a beautiful thing. And again, why does this gentleman's or both of why why does their opinion count because they have that capacity to move the masses they're idols people look up to them their music moves people and it gives them a great deal of power whatever they say people are going to listen to them sadly in these end times way more than scripture i think there's a lot of truth in it as well uh, as a film which is okay a lot of truth is that acceptable? Either you accept all the truth that God has to offer you or nothing. You can't just accept a lot of truth. Is something we're all seeking, isn't it? The song Amazing Grace has such rich heritage. So to be able to... really, that's just what I wanted to show you. They, they did a cover of Amazing Grace, um, which I'm sure on its, on its by itself would stand wonderfully. But the fact that they contributed it to the soundtrack, contributed it to the soundtrack of the shack, this steaming dump pile of garbage, uh, should say it all. Uh, you should not look to them, or you should not revere them in any way, shape, or form that they have anything to do with the one true Jesus Christ. They've proven that they do not revere Holy Scripture in the sense that they think that God would or could come as a female in the form of God the Father and in the form of God, the Holy Spirit. Absolutely ridiculous. All right, so now we're gonna come over to Lauren Daigle's website, and there's actually a reason why I'm here. I'll put the challenge out again to those who insist, or who just will not admit that Lauren Daigle is a fraud. Uh, here's the way that I'll put this to you. The single most popular Christian singer on the face of the earth right now, arguably, right, has a website, where you cannot even find one time the name of Jesus Christ. Not one time the name of Jesus Christ. Do you find that odd? Again, in this day and age, we're looking at the single most powerful tool in the form of the internet, right? Combine that with the single most popular Christian singer on the face of the earth. You should be able to crank out the gospel like never before if it was actually a person that loved Jesus. But the fact that you cannot find the name of Jesus Christ one time should tell you something. Watch the denials in the comments below. It's going to be astonishing, by the way. But let's take a let's take a walk through Lauren Daigle's website, and we'll examine as to what we can find as we go. Now, the first thing you'll find is narcissism, capturing the moment, in black and white. Love it, Lauren. Uh, so out of the gate, so you're going to see a lot of what they call merch. Lauren's got her merch, like Beyonce, like uh, Ariana Grande. She's got tons of merch. Check this out. For $55, you can get a Rise Up baggy crew neck, multiple colors. How about a trust bundle? Two baseball hats, I'm assuming, a, a candle, two T-shirts, and a Snappy pair of yoga pants slash sweatpants. I don't know. Either way, bundling will save you some money. Or you can come down here and for a little bit more, you can get the gift that gives bundle. For $130, you can get yourself a scarf, some Behold Blend Cappuccino mix, I think, or espresso. Uh, her CD, a couple of journals, and I'm not sure what this is, some uh, Catholic rosary beads slash Kabbalah bracelets. I'm not sure. And $120, $130, by the way, that is quite an amount of money. Who's got that laying around? I know you'll read in the description that she says, or maybe the organization says that a lot of that's going to third world countries. Here's the thing. You just don't know. You just, because the merch just keeps going on and on. How about two mugs, a CD and a t-shirt for your little sister? By the way, not much thought. <laughs> This looks like just press-on stuff, put on a T-shirt. Uh, but it's probably designed just to get it out there quickly to get your money. 
because regardless of what you say, she is making merchandise of you. And we'll visit that scripture in just a second. So the merch just goes on and on. And then you can get the, of course, her latest album on vinyl for the low, low price of $44.99. And does it end there? No. More t-shirts because they want to make sure. Oh, here we go. Now it's finally ending. Uh, uh, no, no, it's not ending. More merch. Shop the Behold collection. Well, now we can get into some hoodies and it just keeps going. Just keeps going. Oh, and here's a section for the new items. So you've got all the other t-shirts. Now you can get the new ones. And it keeps going. All kinds of merch. By the way, has anybody seen the name of Jesus Christ here at all? Just one time. No? Maybe you can get it here. Maybe this is a prayer. Get on the prayer. Let's see. Be the first to know. No, this is about sales. It's not a prayer request if you need prayer. It's not a gospel sharing. You can get on the email list to learn about tour dates, sales, and more music when you sign up for Lauren's email subscription. And down at the bottom, of course, just to make sure all the payments are represented. You can get your American Express, Apple Pay, Diners Club International, Discover, MasterCard, PayPal, Visa, on and on and on. They're not going to miss any opportunity to get your money. And it's a good thing because I only had $60 on my Discover card. Now I can get that baggy crew neck because good thing Lauren takes Discover. Come back up. Well, maybe I'm just being mean. Get into her music. How about, well, you can get into her clothing. We did that kind of. How about if we go into accessories? Well, here you go. Here's something I've seen. A look up child water bottle tumbler. This is great for the holiday season. You know, that stocking stuffer for only $20, you can get a Jesus water bottle, right? Is it? No, it's not a Jesus water bottle. It's a Lauren Daigle water bottle. Okay, I'm just trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. Has anybody seen the name of Jesus? No? Well, here you can be, uh, you can, I guess, transform yourself into that gypsy look with the beanie, the scarf, and weirdo beads, I guess. We don't know where that comes from. Uh, Drew, you're just being mean. Well, I'm looking for the name of Jesus. Maybe if I can find the name of Jesus on her website here, I'll be a little bit nicer. No? Hmm. Well, you can you can get a poster. Does that have the name of Jesus on it? No? No, because now we're going back to the old days where you can literally make her your idol by putting a poster of Lauren on the wall. I remember when I was a kid, I had a poster of Walter Payton. He was my idol before I came to Jesus and some rock bands but you know god forbid that she should want to make herself an idol right she wants to give glory to jesus no she doesn't no she doesn't all right maybe oh look <laughs> for those of you who can't afford uh can't afford the 130 dollars bundle we can go into the five dollar bin because they want to squeeze every nickel out of you mr and mrs merchandise uh where you can in the five dollar bin you can find things for ten dollars uh, is that would that be called a click and bait i don't know it's so mean, Drew. More merch. Anybody seen the name of Jesus? Anybody? Has anybody seen the name of Jesus? No. Here I see, behold, a Lauren Daigle t-shirt with her image on it. So all kinds of merch. And of course, I'm sure you're detecting a heavy amount of sar sarcasm. This is nothing but a website of vanity and narcissism. And for you, where you can make Lauren Daigle your idol. Absolutely obnoxious. Now, again, there's going to be so many that are going to come to Lauren's defense. And they'll say things like, well, her songs made me cry. And her songs brought me back to Jesus. I have to really argue there. It is virtually impossible for Lauren Daigle's songs to bring you to Jesus. Because she can't even say the name of Jesus. I think... Again, just to confirm from my last video, two or three songs, she actually had mentioned the name of uh, Jesus in her songs. But most of the time, the lyrics are just him, you, him, he, you, the Lord, and uh, uncannily just cannot mention the name of Jesus Christ. But when I did, when I was doing a search for Lauren Daigle's website, I did come across, even first, uh, Lauren Daigle's uh, ticket tour information. And I wanted to show some stuff to you. For any of you that doubt that this girl is doing it for filthy lucre or for making bank, 
let's take a look. Now, this is the first one, as you saw, I did this in real time. Uh, the first concert, I wanted to check out ticket prices. Here's Lauren Daigle as she's going to appear at Carnegie Hall on January 22nd. That's fairly soon, about a month from today, in fact. If I wanted to take the fam to go see my favorite idol, could I score some gnarly tickets? Let's take a look. So the first, now here's the venue. As I highlighted over here, it'll show you where the seats are. So look for the pop-up. Now for nosebleed seats, way, get up here, way in the back here, uh, for the price of a car payment, you can go see Laura not sing about Jesus Christ. So as we move up, yeah, you're getting a little bit, here we go. Now in the balcony, right, right here, a little bit more, about $25 more, you can watch Laura not sing about Jesus. But what if I wanted to get up really close? Can I do it? Oh, wow, look at this. Now you went from the uh, really you know, like a BMW or a Mercedes car payment into a mortgage payment. You can, now that's right in here. You can watch Lauren not sing about Jesus Christ. This is the shocking part. I'm going to move this over. I'm not sure if you can see that. Here are some seats in right in the front uh, where you can pay $9,000. I'm not sure if this is not a typo, but you can certainly maybe do some research and tell me, but this is what ticket prices are at Carnegie Hall. Absolutely shocking. Now I'm going to bump it back. We'll go back and we'll do, uh, we'll check another venue just to be on the safe side. So we're going to check another venue here just to be fair. I'll scroll down. Here's the Orpheum Theater in Los Angeles. If I wanted to find tickets. And again, I'm doing this in real time. Um, here's the venue over here. Look at the ticket prices. Absolutely amazing. Look at this is, again, these are mortgage payments. Where does, again, the leading Christian, I mean, you'd think she'd be doing anything to get the gospel out there, but she's not. The only thing that this proves is that she is absolutely making bank. Astonishing ticket prices. I always share the story the first concert I ever bought a ticket for was Def Leppard in 1980. I paid $7 for the ticket. Um, and that, of course, was before I knew Jesus. Uh, and I thought, wow, those guys are making some money back then. They got nothing on Lauren Dagan, or what's her name, Lauren Daigle. Absolutely astonishing. She is making some major, major money. All right, so sometimes putting this all into perspective can really help you especially for those that need to wake up and come back to the truth of Jesus Christ. I'm going to summarize this. In this video, here's what we discovered. That the world's most popular Christian artist does not even need to mention the name of Jesus Christ, not even one time on her website. This, in turn, offers zero gospel to anybody on her website. Does anybody find that odd? Okay, if you don't, then you're in denial and you're purposely denying the truth and the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ. We did discover that she does offer a massive amount of merch. We know this. It's a ridiculous amount. We can also confirm via video evidence that Lauren Daigle loved the fact that God Almighty was portrayed as a woman. And she contributed to the soundtrack of The Shack, which is one of the most blasphemous movies in our time. We also discovered that for the price of a car, a monthly car payment, or even a mortgage payment, you can attend one of Lauren's concerts and see her not sing about Jesus Christ, at least by name. We also confirmed that for King and Country, you know, these supposed holy men of God contributed to, they support and promote the movie, The Shack. You need to go back and watch what they said. By all means, do it but not by no means can you call them holy men of god so if you come over to second corinthians this is a verse i show many many times chapter 11 scroll down please understand what holy scripture is telling you and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing of his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according 
to their works. Scripture is telling you what's happening. There are millions that have set this woman up as an idol, and they are caught in some kind of a magic spell or in depth of delusion that they can't even see. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will wake up out of this again, going over the things that we talked about in this video. Something is not right when the single most popular Christian singer in the world does not even mention the name of Jesus Christ. Recognize the devices of Satan and how he's doing these things to deceive the lambs of Christ. And again, sadly, even veterans of Jesus Christ are caught up in this folly. Watch what happens in the next year or two as she puts Christianity in the dust and it'll get worse and worse uh, for whatever reason, if she doesn't, uh, you will see more and more bad doctrine added to what it is that she's doing. And right now, uh, I contend it's what she's been doing from the start. It has never been about the sins of Lauren Daigle or the sins of you and I. We're all sinners. What it does have to do with is her teaching a false doctrine. And here it is in James 4.4. You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And just for the record, when Jesus went and ate with the sinners, he was always teaching the gospel. Lives get saved. The gospel gets preached. He doesn't just go sing songs with them, collect a paycheck and walk away, and then print out a bunch of t-shirts and mugs and rosary beads. He preached the gospel. There was tears shed. Lives were changed. People collapsed and they were brought away from their sin and into the beautiful gospel of Jesus Christ. What she's doing is not that. She's teaching her followers to be friends with the world. So for those of you that love Jesus Christ in all truth and sober-mindedness, uh, I wish and pray the best for you. And if you want to, certainly leave your comments. We'll talk to you soon.